And I think that uh, China in particular has been stockpiling silver. Uh, so, so what do they do with this stockpile? I mean, you know, they see the price rise. Do they do what the Americans have been doing with gold over the decades? You know, when you see gold going up, it's a bit embarrassing. So what you do is you sell a bit in the market and try and drive the price down. No, they don't. They, they need that silver. They're not going to part with it. I can't see anyone who has accumulated stockpiles of silver selling into this market to try and suppress the price because they know they'll lose it. You know, they won't come back. They don't want to get into the situation where the Americans are in, uh, you know, with, with uh, the U.S. Treasury having sold gold. Silver has reached its highest price in over a decade, fueled by China's booming solar panel industry and strong investor demand. This month, the spot price of silver surpassed $30 per ounce, a level not seen since February 2013. According to a recent International Energy Agency report, China's investment in solar photovoltaic panels doubled from 2022 to 2023, giving it control over 80% of global manufacturing capacity. While much attention has been paid to China's gold accumulation, silver has experienced a similar surge. This significant rise in silver prices has defied traditional market manipulation efforts by bullion banks and speculators. The failure to suppress silver prices through coordinated selling indicates a major shift in market dynamics, largely due to a persistent supply-demand imbalance. According to Alastair McLeod, the ongoing stockpiling of silver, particularly by China, is a key factor in this market shift. Unlike the US, which has historically sold gold to manage price spikes, China is holding onto its silver reserves. This strategy suggests that China anticipates further price increases and views silver as a long-term asset. Alastair sees that China's reluctance to sell its silver reserves indicates a strategic choice to maintain its holdings, knowing that selling now would mean missing out on potential future gains. This approach contrasts sharply with the US Treasury's actions with gold, where selling off reserves has depleted actual gold holdings. In addition to silver, China has been amassing significant quantities of gold off its official balance sheet. The People's Bank of China was the top gold buyer among central banks in the first quarter of 2024, purchasing another 27 metric tons and marking the 17th consecutive month of gold buying. For investors, this indicates that the trends in silver and gold prices are likely to continue, driven by geopolitical strategies and financial stability considerations. We will present clips from Alastair McLeod's interview with The Money Level Show. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Uh, you know, you should be aware and people should be aware of the dynamics driving the price. Um, and this is something that's not going to stop soon because there isn't the stock available. Uh, there has been an accumulation of stock over the years. If you look, if you read uh, the uh, forecasts and the records of the Silver Institute. Um, but I think quite a lot of that has been stockpiling silver. And I think that uh, China in particular has been stockpiling silver. Uh, so, so what do they do with this stockpile? I mean, you know, they see the price rise. Do they do what the Americans have been doing with gold over the decades? You know, when you see gold going up, it's a bit embarrassing. So what you do is you sell a bit in the market and try and drive the price down. No, they don't. They, they need that silver. They're not going to part with it. I can't see anyone who has accumulated stockpiles of silver selling into this market to try and suppress the price because they know they'll lose it. You know, they won't come back. They don't want to get into the situation where the Americans are in, uh, you know, with, with uh, the U.S. Treasury having sold gold. Um, there is no doubt that uh, the U.S. Treasury does not have the gold it claims to have. Uh, then, um, you know, look at what happened, uh, you know, when Germany demanded a small part of their gold earmarked as their property at the New York Fed. And when they demanded that back, you know, oh, oh, that's very difficult. We can't possibly do that. You know, we're going to need at least seven years notice was, that was what came back. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It was quite clear that they'd Blogged that gold on and they just didn't have it. And any pictures of, you know, vaults full of gold. And incidentally, they they denied the um, uh, uh, the Bundesbank representatives 
um, the, you know, uh, it, they didn't give them permission to, they denied permission for the Bundesbank's representatives to go and look at the vaults and inspect their own property. You know, I mean, why? <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> it's, it's quite simple. Now contrast that um, in this situation with China, which has been accumulating gold off balance sheet, if I can put it that way, certainly since uh, the People's Bank was appointed by law with the responsibility to manage the nation's or the state's gold back in 1983. I reckon they've got over 30,000 tons now hidden. And this is apart from what they actually show on their balance sheet as, as reserves. Russia is a similar situation. Russia has a certain amount of gold on uh, the balance sheet of the central bank, uh, but they've got two further funds, uh, uh, which um, are believed to hold a further 10,000 tons. Um, now, we can't verify that, but um, you know, I talk to people who are well informed in these matters, if I can put it that way, uh, and uh, that's the figure which keeps on coming up. So... I mean, and, and and that means that Russia has got more gold than than uh, America officially says it has. Now, we know officially, we can be damn certain officially that America hasn't got that gold. So, you know, this is a situation where, um, you know, the king rat of fiat currencies is completely unprotected. And uh, the currencies of its two main um, enemies, hegemons, whatever you like to call them, uh, is well protected and can be revealed at any moment of their choosing. They do actually have it in their power to destroy the dollar. Central banks worldwide are increasingly turning to gold to diversify their reserves and reduce dependency on the US dollar. By incorporating gold alongside other assets, they aim to mitigate risks of currency devaluation and geopolitical instability. Gold stability and liquidity make it a valuable asset during financial crises and market turbulence. This trend has caught Western capital markets off guard, as many underestimate the informed and strategic nature of actions taken by countries like China. China's persistent and informed demand for gold suggests a deeper strategic shift than mere short-term speculation. Unlike the US, which has historically sold gold to manage price spikes, China is committed to holding on to its gold reserves. Alastair suggests that this strategy indicates that they anticipate further price increases and view gold as a long-term asset. The notion that this demand will subside after a price increase or a market shakeout is likely misguided. Instead, China's strategic accumulation of gold, driven by a broader geopolitical and economic strategy, suggests lasting implications for the global gold market. This shift could significantly reevaluate gold's role in international reserves and its impact on global financial stability. Gold is money and the rest is credit. I mean, you know, we were talking about this off air before we started this interview. Uh, and um, of course, governments deny it. Governments uh, reckon that gold is no longer part of the monetary system. Um, they don't really have an answer as to why uh, various central banks retain their gold holdings. Though if you talk to central bankers, they do actually understand that it's nobody else's liability and it, it is, uh, has a unique value as that. They don't necessarily say that gold is money as such, but they do recognize that role. Um, but if you uh, go to um, the Far East and talk to the Chinese, um, I mean, basically what the People's Bank is doing is it's selling dollars. It's not buying gold, it's selling dollars. That's the way to look at it. And um, it's in, in effect through its actions, it's telling all the savers in, in China to do the same. And the savers in China, I mean, you're talking about 35% of a GDP of roughly $18 trillion equivalent. That is the amount that's put aside every year in the form of savings. I mean, that's around about $6 trillion. Now, where's that, where, where's that $6 trillion going to go? As I say, it's not going into property. That was yesterday's story. It's not going to the stock market. That was yesterday's story. It goes on bank deposit, but you can see that um, you know bank deposits will pay three percent or something like that. Then there's this new game in town. You know this is being led, if you like, by the People's Bank. They're selling dollars now. That's official policy. Okay, that's fine. But also, you know, this is something we could really make money on. You can see the driver, if you like. 
Now, we're looking at six trillion dollars equivalent accumulating year in, year out in savers hands. Well, I'm talking household savers. Uh, this is this is important to understand. Household savings, six trillion. That's what? That's the equivalent of about 8,000 tons, I think, of gold. No, it's more. I don't know. Anyway, it's, I mean, they're huge figures, huge, huge figures. I mean, if they just put 10 percent of that, it just cleans us all out. Um, the way this is going, I mean, the way the Chinese like to punt things that are rising uh, and they can do this. I mean, you know, the, all the banks offer gold accounts. So you can literally, with a minimum of around about 500 yuan, you can open a gold account. So, um, you know, you've immediately got access to buying gold. As well as that, people have got apps for dealing in gold on their mobile phones. And, of course, you can go into the local store and buy, um, you know, jewellery, 24-karat jewellery and um, ingots and all the rest of it. And that, again, is a huge, great demand. And, um, you know, routinely these shops run out of stock. So you can see what's happening. And, of course, it's caught the Western capital markets wrong-footed, completely wrong-footed. And you have a lot of people who say, well, you know, the chap and the, the, the Chinese are really speculating. Yeah, they do speculate. But if you think they're spe speculating on an uninformed basis, I think you'd be making a huge mistake. And the idea that the speculation is going to go away after it's risen a certain amount or, you know, you get a decent shakeout and then it's a different story. If China continues accumulating silver at its current pace, we can expect a significant surge in silver prices due to increased demand and supply constraints. This strategic stockpiling will likely shift market power towards China, providing it with a substantial economic advantage, particularly in industries reliant on silver, such as technology and renewable energy. Other countries may respond by bolstering their silver reserves, potentially leading to a sustained bull market in precious metals. Share your thoughts on Alistair's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Until next time!